Number two. This has got to be the top of the list for me. It's the, we know nothing about these incredible animals, also known as the 400 million year mystery or solving the puzzle of the shark. I'm gonna approach this one on three levels. One, it's just wrong. We know a ton about these animals. Two, if we're gonna say we don't know much about sharks, we kinda of have to admit we don't know much about anything. And three, so what? Why do we have to know? All right, so for number one, I've actually gotta break that down into subcategories because it's a little bit complicated. First of all, the idea that we know nothing about these sharks is completely wrong because there's an incredible amount of information that's been acquired through observation and through studies, peer-reviewed studies, and people who just go out and enjoy time with sharks. But with so many species of shark, of course there are gonna be different amounts of information that have been learned about each species. So let's look at a popular one like the white shark, which ironically, people still love to say, we know next to nothing about these animals. It's just not true. All you have to do is spend the time to look up all the papers that people have spent a great deal of effort writing or the documentaries that have been made or look at the information on my own website about these animals. Let me give you a few examples off the top of my head. We not only know their migration routes, we know that there are subpopulations that don't interact with other populations and have their own migration routes. On those migrations, we know how fast they go at what time of the migration that they go. We know how often they dive during the migration. We know how many times they beat their tails during the migration at different times of the migration. We know how deep they go and for how long they go. We know what they eat at different depths because of stable isotopes. We know almost every trivial detail about their anatomy that you can think of, going all the way from how their liver works to the rods and cones of their eyes, to how they compensate for a refraction and lift their heads above the water to look around. We know their average age. We have a pretty good idea of their maximum age. We know what their sexual maturity age is and what their sexual maturity size is. We know their gestation period. We know how large their litters are. We know what size the babies are. We know that they're endothermic. We know how their body temperature works. We know about wonder nets. We know about the ampullae of Lorenzini. We know about all their many different ways of hunting and detecting. What's the distance between the dorsal fin and the caudal fin? What's the distance between those fins at a certain age? How much time does the shark spend at a certain depth at a certain age? At this point, we even know that the babies are being contaminated in the womb by the pollution in the ocean. We've analyzed to death almost every hunting strategy that you can think of. We know that their diet changes as they mature. We know that different populations have slightly different pigmentation. We even know where their pupping grounds are despite what you hear in the media. No, we haven't actually caught a white shark being born on film. Is that what it's going to take for us to say that we know everything to actually see it taking place? Because as far as you know, when we do capture that on film, it might not be where they normally give birth because of our interference in order to get the footage. But I will say this, where we suspect that they are giving birth is the same five decades later as it was when we used to suspect those locations, except that now people who profit on the exploitation of these animals claiming that we're learning these things via technology and tagging are coming to the same conclusions that we came to as the people who were using visual evidence of the actual physical presence of babies in those same locations. And if we extend this theme beyond white sharks, some of them look like rocks, while others blend perfectly into the deep blue sea. Yes, some of them even have venom, venomous horns. Some lay eggs, some give birth to live young. Some have babies that eat the other babies while they're in the womb. We've even captured this on film. Saying we know hardly anything about these animals is like saying that you can't see a painting in front of you because someone removed one shade of the color of the sky that's in the background of the subject of the painting. But a subcategory of that is not only do we have all of those studies, but now we're coming up with studies that tell us things that we used to know and should know logically. For example, finding out that animals make these incredible migrations. Look, most animals migrate. We're one of the only ones that doesn't migrate, and we used to migrate. 
we don't migrate now because we found a way to manipulate our surroundings to where we don't have to migrate. But the fact that we are finding out that most species migrate and go places to fulfill certain things in their lives, such as mating or giving birth or feeding or following temperatures, that's just a basic part of life for most animals. That's not an incredible discovery. Now, I'm not saying it's not interesting, but let's admit that we are doing it for the sake of satisfying curiosities or for academic purposes. It's not because it's a necessity, but I'm digressing to point three again. Some of these other studies are revealing things such as that predators like to use stealth while hunting. Well, thank you very much. Other studies are showing that prey experience stress when they're being hunted. I mean, come on. We don't need studies about some of these things. The real point here is that we do know a lot about these animals. Exactly how much do we need to know? Because we seem to have this endless quest to find out every last possible thing that we can know about these sharks. And the only thing, in my opinion, we need to know is that they go places for a reason. They don't go there for the hell of it. Therefore, we already know that it's an important part of their lives. This brings me to point two. If we're gonna say that we don't know anything about sharks, we kind of have to say that about most living creatures. Yeah, it sounds good. I mean, sharks are mysterious and they live in the mysterious ocean. They're under the surface. So, yeah, oh yeah, what, what, what's that thing doing? But really, what do you know about animals that are right next to you on land? How much do we know in our current lifestyle, which pretty much revolves around our jobs and our iPhones and making a dollar, how much do you know about, say, a deer? Do you really know much about deer? Other than some people hunt them and sometimes your car hits them and that they have hooves and they walk around and eat plants? I mean, are you or are people on average a deer expert? Are you even a dog expert? Most of us own a dog, but how much can you really tell me about your dog other than its breed, that it's a canine, that it likes to poop and it likes to eat and it likes to take walks? I'm just saying, Let's be real about how much knowledge we have about all species of animals and how much knowledge we care to obtain about those species, unless of course we attach this mysterious aura around them and get this idea that we need to know all of this stuff. I would argue that we know more about some species of sharks than we do about terrestrial animals that we come into contact with on a semi-regular basis. So. How much do we need to know about sharks? Which brings me to point number three. What is the goal of obtaining this information? Sharks were fine before humans started studying them. They were fine before humans. They were better before humans. So does that mean that the need to study sharks is to save the sharks, which is really another stupid thing that people say which deserves its own category. So I'll just touch on it briefly. Sometimes we admit that we pursue data for the sake of data. After all, scientific careers depend on continuing to collect data. But studies that are invasive, damaging, and even lethal usually use a more persuasive justification, such as saving the species, the greater good. You have to break some eggs to make an omelet. So let me go back to my comparison of our knowledge of land animals and marine animals. Lions are on their way out. Lions. And we know it. And we know why it's happening. But we're not stopping it. Lions. Do you think the problem is that we don't know enough about lions? If humans are going to fail to save an iconic animal like the lion, a mammal that lives on land like we do, and we know everything there is to know about that animal. Why do you believe pursuing more data about a fish in the ocean is going to save it from a similar fate? I want to reiterate, I am not ripping on knowledge, but knowledge without wisdom has limited usefulness. Knowledge just for the sake of knowledge, I have a little bit of a problem with. And the pursuit of more knowledge when we're not properly using the knowledge that we have strikes me as a little bit useless, foolish, if not even destructive.